Good day, everybody. This is Dr. John Radke from the Grace Recovery Church and the Buffalo Valley Counseling Center. Today uh, is uh, September the 26th, and we'd like to share a 12-step devotional for you folks that are working in recovery so hard. Uh, we're so glad you tuned into our station. This Grace Recovery Church has uh, approximately over 160 videos now on YouTube that you can go to and watch for free. And we also link those up with our Facebook page and the Twitter page and also Google+. Plus. These devotionals are made to help you in your recovery walk with the Lord every day. We hope that you'll tune in, listen to them. They give you a lot of instruction, a lot of real meat, and knowing how that you can have a successful recovery walk with the Lord every day as a Christian. Uh, I've written a couple of wonderful tools and uh, books that you can uh, order on Amazon.com, but you also can write to us and we will send it to you. Uh, our mailing address is 8 Lar Circle, that's L-A-H-R Circle, New Columbia, Pennsylvania, 17856. And we can or we can mail a copy to you if you'd like to send us a check for eight dollars, or you can send us a money order, or you can you can purchase these books through a credit card on our uh, GoFundMe page, which is uh, through Buffalo Valley Counseling Center. Go there, and you can give a donation of eight, uh, f- actually nine dollars. It would be. And then we will mail this uh, book to you. Uh, the first book I'm talking about is this one right here. It's the, the, the new Christian 12-step book. This uh, in it has the Christian 12 Steps of Recovery. And it also has a bunch of tools that you can use every day uh, as a help guide to guide you in a daily devotional, quiet time type uh, guide that will help you every day to overcome compulsions and overcome addictions. There is only one way that you can defeat an addiction or compulsion, and that is, number one, you have to have Jesus Christ as your higher power. We believe that at the Grace Recovery Church. And then, number two, you need to have a regular program that you work every day, a devotional quiet time program where you use the 12 steps and go through the 12 steps, and we suggest that you take one of the steps and work on them one month and then go to the next step. There are 12 that means it's going to take you an entire year to get through this book. And then you back up and you start over again. But there's a tremendous amount of information in this book that will help you in your recovery. Go to uh, Amazon.com, look up my name, Dr. John Radke, and you will be able to purchase one of these books. I've written some children's books as well, and I would like to encourage you if, you, if you know any children that have a problem with fear, I wrote this wonderful book. It's on Amazon.com, Bella the dog who overcame her fear and then also we have this for sale on the internet on the Amazon website and it's called learning to control your anger this is a book for children who have difficulty with anger really helpful tool wonderful book easy reading fun reading and uh, fun illustrations and then the last book that I have uh, that you might purchase on Amazon is called the new believers Bible discipleship workbook this workbook tells you all the basics of what it means to be a brand new Christian in Christ and the things that you need to know about prayer, uh, about uh, going to church, the Bible, witnessing, uh, giving. It talks about all these different important issues that Christians need to know about right off the bat when you become a Christian. And if you'd like this, you can order this through Amazon or write to us, and we can also mail you a copy of this as well. All right, well, we're so glad you tuned in today. What we'd like to do is I'd like to read the 12 Steps of Recovery for you, the Christian 12 Steps, and then we're going to look at a devotional that I found, and I want to talk to you about the things that are happening right now in the United States, things that are current that really apply to us as Christians and especially as Christians in recovery. So I'm going to turn in the book, and I'm going to be reading from our new Christian 12 Steps, and I'm going to be reading the 12 Steps of Recovery. If you have a book, you can follow along with me as I read. Step number one, I admit that I'm powerless over my blank, over my codependencies and over my addictions, and that it has made my daily life unhappy and unmanageable. Number two, I've come to believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and that he can restore my life to health and sanity. Number three, I've made a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of Christ today and his will for me. Number four, I 
I will make a searching and fearless moral inventory of myself now and throughout the day. Number five, I will admit to the Lord and to myself and to another confidential person uh, what I have done wrong today. Number six, I will be willing and ready to have the Lord remove all my defects of character and sins as the, as the Holy Spirit convicts me. Number seven, I will humbly ask the Lord to forgive my sins and will forgive myself even if I know I will repeat them. Number eight, I will make a list of all persons I have harmed and ask for their forgiveness. Number nine, I will make direct amends with those who I have hurt or with those who have hurt me and practice biblical forgiveness except when to do so could injure or hurt the other person. Number ten, I will keep my focus throughout the day and when I'm wrong, I'll promptly admit it. Number eleven, I will seek through prayer, meditation, and surrender to improve my conscious contact with the Lord through the day, praying for knowledge of God's will for me and the power to carry that out. And number 12, I am being spiritually and emotionally revived as a result of these steps. I will try to carry this message to other unhealthy people and will practice these principles in my daily walk. And I would just like to read the serenity prayer that's on page number 13. And here's how it goes, the first statement. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change today, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I'd like to read the statement of identity. It says, because of Christ's redemptive work in my life, I am a new creation of infinite worth. I am deeply loved. I am completely forgiven. I am fully pleasing. I am totally accepted in Christ. When my performance reflects my new identity in Christ, that reflection is dynamically unique. There has never been another person like me in the history of creation, nor will there ever be. God has made me an original, one of a kind, a special person. All right, well, those are the 12 steps and the serenity prayer and the statement of identity. Well, let's take a look at the Word of God today. Before we do, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to look into God's Word and to learn about our recovery and the choices we must make. Uh, these are choices that are important, and probably the most important choice we must make when we're in recovery is to choose uh, to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and our higher power. And I pray, Lord, that today as we look into God's Word, you open my heart and help me through the Holy Spirit to communicate its truth, and uh, that those who hear it will be blessed. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to talk to a little bit today about all that's happening today, especially what just recently happened in the news about the American flag and uh, the NFL and the players who refused to, uh, uh, to stand and put their hand over their heart. You know, I think back of the many years that I played athletics as a little kid, little league baseball, and uh, played in uh, basketball in high school and then later in college. And before every game, they would play the national anthem. And it was customary to stand, put your hand over your heart, take your hat off, and honor our flag and our national anthem because... It was showing respect for the country we lived in. Now, I knew that there were things that I didn't like in our country, things that I didn't really uh, support in our country that I think were wrong. Even some of the presidents that served uh, in our country I didn't necessarily agree with. But I always respected our flag and always respected the national anthem and conducted myself appropriately. And I believe that is what Americans do. That is part of America. We might not always agree. We have many different views. But we take a stand when it comes to the flag and to the national anthem. Now, we have a lot of people that have gotten left into our country. Many of these people are illegal aliens. And they don't respect our country. They don't under even understand our history. And they don't understand that we f there were people and w men and women who fought and died for our freedom, going all the way back to the founding of our Constitution. They don't understand this, and so this is why they don't appreciate it and they disrespect. Now, there is a new millennium generation that's growing up, and they're being taught by their professors within the universities to disrespect the United States 
and these professors and these liberal college professors are teaching communism and socialism within our universities and they're teaching that America is a failure and America is bigoted and America is is not uh, is not uh, interested in the rights of people and that is just so not true I mean there's a lot of wrong in America and there's a lot of things I'd like to see change but there's a process to do that and uh, you can elect officials, you can run for office, you can vote for bills, you can try to change your country. But the most important thing you should do as a Christian is pray for our leadership. Pray for our president, pray for our leaders in our country, even if you don't like them, pray for them. Did I pray for Barack Obama? Oh yes, I prayed a lot for Barack Obama, even though I didn't vote for him and I didn't think he was a good president. And I'm praying for the current president, Donald Trump. Even though he might do things that I don't always agree with, and you might not either, but we need to pray for our leaders. The Bible teaches us to do that uh, in the scriptures. It talks about that in Romans chapter 13, that we're to honor the government that's over us, even if it's corrupt. And you know that verse of scripture in Romans 13 was written during the time the Apostle Paul wrote that verse, and it was during the time of the Roman government, the most corrupt government that ever existed. And yet Paul told Christians to respect the law, and to pray for their leaders that God would work in their hearts and change them and bring revival to our country. That's what we really need to pray for, for revival in our country. Now I want to talk to you about choices. You know, in recovery we need to make choices every day. We need to choose every day whether I'm going to be clean or sober. I'm going to choose as a Christian whether I'm going to sin and I'm going to give into temptation and sin or I'm going to resist temptation and I'm going to be victorious in Christ. And here's a perfect classic illustration of what happens when we don't take a stand. In Exodus chapter 32, you know the story so well, it was when the children of Israel came out of Egypt from slavery, and they were in the wilderness, and uh, Moses then went up to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God. And while he was away, he put his brother Aaron in charge. And Aaron was a weak leader. Aaron did not take a stand for God. He was a uh, feeble need, weak back. And uh, we have had leaders in our country like that, people who are not strong, people who have allowed and tolerated things they shouldn't tolerate. And uh, now we, this is why, why I believe it's such a shock, excuse me, for Americans to, uh, to hear the things that Donald Trump is saying because Donald Trump is, is an a in-your-face president. He says it like it is. He doesn't mince words. Sometimes he says it the wrong way. He's not real gracious. He's not real tactful in what he says, but he says the truth. And uh, he's saying that sin is sin, and that's it. And what Donald Trump is saying is that the American flag is a symbol uh, of our freedom. It's a symbol of our country. It represents so many people who have fought and bled and died to make us free and so when that flag is flown and when we sing the national anthem we should honor it if you're an American and you live in America and you're an American citizen then you should take your hat off you should stand put your hand over your heart and you should sing the national anthem not just stand there you know when I was a boy uh, I used to sing the national anthem I just didn't stand there and you know I, I find that's kind of shocking too that when I see these professional athletes on TV and the national anthems being played they just stand there with their heart over maybe they have their hand on their heart but they're not even singing the words because I'm wondering maybe they don't even know the words uh, maybe they don't understand what the words mean but the words of the song the lyrics are extremely powerful because they talk about our founding as American people now Moses goes up to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments Aaron's in charge and guess what happens Aaron is weak and the people uh, grow weary and they say well where is Moses is he coming down he hasn't been he's not going to come down maybe he died up there uh, talking to God maybe he won't come back and we need somebody and something to worship we we can't find God we don't know where God is well well they weren't seeking God and so they convinced Aaron to take gold and bronze and precious metals and to melt them down and then to put them in the form of a calf, a golden calf. What was that golden calf? That golden calf was a symbol 
of Baal worship. This remember Baal was uh, was symbolically represented by a by an oxen by a calf with with horns, and so out of all the images they choose this ox this this ran, this this bull and they make it they they make a wooden image and then they overlay it with gold and that they collected from all the jewelry uh, from people who received uh, jewelry and gold jewelry and precious metals out of Egypt and though they they made them they got them all together melted them down and then overlaid this this uh, calf with gold and then they made it a god, and they and they they were going to worship it. They were going to worship it because they said, "Well, Moses isn't coming back, so we got to improvise." Isn't that interesting? That sounds so much like America, doesn't it? It sounds like America who has forgotten God, and uh, they don't know where God is because they're not seeking God, and so they they lose sight of God. They don't understand. They don't see God, even if it hits them smack in the face. And so they, what have they done? What has Americans done? They've created images. Even sports figures have become images. Movie stars have become images that people worship, and they idolize them. And they have idols, and they're idol worshipers. America has turned into nothing but a bunch of idol worshipers. And, and so we have forgotten God. And uh, so this is exactly what happened when Moses went up to receive the Ten Commandments from God, who is going to bring down and then bring to, to the, his people and present the law of God to them. So he's coming down the mountain, and we're going to pick it up where uh, it starts in verse 17 of Joshua chapter 32. I want you to listen to our text, and then we'll make some points. It says, When Joshua heard the boisterous noise, they were coming down the mountain, because Joshua, remember, was with Moses. He didn't go all the way to the top with him, but he stayed with him to protect him. And he says, when he heard the shouting, uh, the boisterous noise and the shouting below, then he exclaimed to Moses, it sounds like war in the camp. It was so noisy, Joshua said, well, it sounds like they're actually fighting against each other. But Moses replied, no. It's not a shout of victory, nor the wailing of defeat. He said, I hear the sound of celebration. Moses could hear the music playing and the cymbals playing and the people sh singing and dancing around the golden calf, which was a symbol of Baal worship. And when they came near the camp, Moses saw the calf and the dancing and he burned with anger. He threw the stone tablets, the Ten Commandments, to the ground, smashing them at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf that they had, and took the calf and made it, uh, took it and burned it. And then he ground it into powder and he threw it into water and forced the people to drink it. Now I want to stop here and just say that this calf was a symbol of Baal worship. And do you know that just recently in New York City, near St. Peter's Cathedral, several hundred feet from 9-11, we, the people of New York, erected an archway, the actual ancient archway, replica, of the Temple of Baal. It is actually the archway where people would go and the Israelites would go in when they were in, in, in apostasy and they would go and present their children to Baal and they would sacrifice little babies and have them killed on an altar and sacrifice them to the God of Baal. And they have erected this archway in New York City. Now most people don't know this because it wasn't on the news, but you can see it on Google. It's all the information is there. Google and go, go to YouTube and you'll see uh, that Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who was uh, is a pro kind of a preacher prophet, he was actually there and he documented the whole thing, the unveiling. And the new the the mayor of New York was there, and he said this image belongs. This image is right where it belongs. Well, how how awful to think that we were erected an image, a archway that symbolized Baal. And uh, my friends, we have come a long way. We have really gone down the tubes in America. We're putting up images of Baal in New York City and, and being proud about it. Well, these people, 
made an image of gold and they were worshiping him. This is idolatry. This is a violation of the very Ten Commandments that God is going to give the people. Now, they hadn't received the Ten Commandments because in one of the Ten Commandments, of course, you know them well, is thou shalt not have any other gods before me. God will say that in the Ten Commandments. They didn't hear that because they never received the first set of Ten Commandments because Moses smashed them in his anger because he felt, well, these people aren't ready to receive God's commandments. And uh, he was angry. It says he burned in his wrath. And he took the, he ground this calf up. He made the people grind it up, put it into powder, and then made the people who actually were worshiping around it, he made them drink, forced them to drink this ointment, this con- concoction. Okay, now verse 21. Finally, he turned to Aaron, his brother, and demanded, What did these people do to you to make you bring such a terrible sin? upon the people and and here's what Aaron said well well, now don't get upset don't get upset my lord Aaron replied you yourself know how evil these people are they said to me make such gods make us gods who will lead us and we don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt so I told them Whoever has gold jewelry, take it off. And then they brought it to me, and I simply threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. What a cock of baloney. Uh, Aaron is giving some kind of a lame excuse of why he was justifying uh, building and and being partaking of this image, this building of this calf. And he says, it, can you, I love that line. He says, I just simply threw the, the gold into the fire and boom, voila, out came a golden calf. Uh, Moses, what a lie. This man was weak. He was not a strong Christian. And let me tell you, Aaron represents a type of a weak Christian that we see also in recovery. When you are a weak recovering Christian you will fall to sin you'll give in to peer pressure and uh, you you'll you'll just say uh, many times addicts will say gee I don't know how it happened uh, I was just with some friends one night and bam I got high and and now I'm in jail I don't know how it happened yes you do yes you do you let it happen because you didn't take a stand you didn't take a stand and you didn't make up your mind I am going to be sober, I'm going to stay sober, I'm going to not go back to that heroin, I'm not going to use alcohol anymore, I'm not going to look at pornography anymore, I'm not going to be a compulsive gambler anymore. You see, you've got to make up your mind. And you have to do that every single day. You have to take a stand if you're going to succeed. Aaron was a weak Christian. He was a pathetic Christian. So, verse 25, Moses saw that Aaron had let the people get completely out of control, much to the amusement of their enemies. The whole world is looking at America, and they're laughing. They're looking at the United States and saying, like, what is wrong with these Americans? They are schizophrenic. They're split in half. There are people who are liberal and demonstrating, and they're saying they don't have this and they don't have that, and then they're then there are the uh, American patriots who stand up and salute the flag and believe in their country and support good causes. And, and, and the enemy, the enemy hates us. Other countries hate us. The same thing is true. When you're a recovering Christian and somebody comes up to you and says, well, hey, do you want to, do you want to go out and smoke some dope? And you say, no. No, I'm not going to do it because I'm a Christian. Number one, I believe uh, Jesus Christ is my higher power, and I want to stay. I want to stay clean and sober. See, you have to take a stand, and and there, so many people in our country are out of control. It's because the leadership is weak, and the leadership has allowed them to get out of control. And we need to be around people that are going to help us, to support us. If we're a recovering Christian, we cannot do this by ourselves. That's why we need to be in a recovery group. That's why we need to have a sponsor. That's why we need to go to meetings. That's why we need to have accountability, because we're not strong enough. We need to have someone who can help us to get sober and to stay sober. So, 
we go on. Verse 26, So he stood at the entrance of the camp and shouted, All of you who are on the Lord's side, come here and join me. So you know what Moses did that day? He drew a line. He drew a line in the sand. He says, Okay, you people who are on the Lord's side, you believe in God, the Jehovah God, and, and you are on his side. I want you to come and you join me on this side of the line, okay? And then all the Levites... They were the the Levites were the ones who worship who were the who were the priests and the ones who uh, did the form of worship in the temple. They gathered around him. So it sounds to me like a group of Hebrew people, the Levites, were the ones who really had it together. They didn't participate in this worship of this image. They were against it. And of course, you will have to take a stand. Uh, in your life as a Christian, there will be people against you. When you're a Levite and you're a Christian and you really believe in God, there are going to be people who are going to criticize you, but you're going to have to take a stand. And Moses said, now you get on this side, come here and join me. And then verse 27, Moses told them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has said to me. Each of you take your swords and go back and forth from one end of the camp to the other end of the camp and I want you to kill everyone even if it's your brother your friend or your neighbor the Levites obeyed Moses command and that day about 3,000 people died 3,000 people the ones who worship the golden calf were killed because they practiced idolatry God drew a line in the sand and he said if you're gonna serve me serve me if you're gonna serve other gods then you now have become my enemy now listen when you take drugs when you're an addict God is displeased you are not God's ally you are his enemy and God wants you to be sober and clean he wants you on the Levite side he doesn't want you on the drug side and so you're going to have to make a choice. And do you know something? The Levites picked up their swords and their spears and they killed the people who wanted to dabble around in idolatry worship. And someday God's going to come back and he's going to judge this world. And those who want to practice liberalism and idolatry and wickedness and Satanism, they will be judged. God will kill them and they will be separated from God for eternity in a place called hell. If you are an addict and you do not come to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your higher power, eventually those drugs will do the same thing that the Levites did. They will kill you. They will kill you and you will die. You will die if you're an addict, if you don't stop using your addiction. And my friend, you need to make a choice. Am I going to be sober today? Or am I going to, and I'm going to be clean? Am I going to have Jesus Christ as my higher power? Am I going to practice the 12 steps, the Christian 12 steps of recovery? Or am I going to keep dabbling around with the people that are worshipers of drugs, worshipers of alcohol? That's their idol. That's their God. It's just like a golden calf. They worship them. There are people that go to California because they now legalize marijuana. They move there because they love marijuana so much they want to smoke it. They're worshiping marijuana. It's an idol. Now I finish. Verse 27, Moses told them, This is what the Lord God said. And then in verse 29, after they had killed 3,000 people, then it says, Then Moses told the Levites, Today you have ordained yourself for the service of the Lord for you obeyed him even though it meant killing your own sons and brothers today you have earned a blessing listen we have got to take a stand if you're a family and you have a person who's an addict in your family you have to take a stand even if it hurts even if it means uh, between life and death that you have to uh, turn them in maybe you have to have them arrested maybe you have to set them up and have them arrested so the police will arrest them put them in jail it's better that they're in jail than they're dead on the street
from their heroin overdose. My friends, we need to make a choice. Just like the Israelites had to make a choice back there in the book of Exodus, God has asked us to make a choice. <clears throat> who, are we, who are we going to serve today? And if you're an American, and you live in America, and you're an American citizen, you need to make up your mind. Who are you going to serve? Uh, do you believe in this country? Are you going to pray for your leaders? Are you going to try to make our country better? Or are you going to tear it apart and, re and rebel and destroy it? There is, a, there is a faction in our country now, the liberals under George Soros and some of the liberal satanic leaders that are trying to destroy our democracy. They're, destro they're trying to destroy America because they want America to be in chaos. They want it to be in chaos. And this is going to continue. And you, as, you and I as Christians need to pray for our country, pray for our leaders, pray for safety, and pray that God will squash this wickedness in our country. And it will, instead of being devices, it will lead to revival. You and I, if we're practicing recovery, we need to make a choice every day, don't we? Practically, we do. We need to get up every morning and say, Lord... I choose to be sober today. I choose to trust Jesus. I choose to make Him my higher power. Well, I hope this devotion has helped you today. I hope that it has encouraged you and that you are going to take a stand and you are going to stand with the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to be a sober Christian and you're going to also be a sober American and a, and a godly American. We need some more godly Americans. We need people who are going to take a stand against these people and not be afraid to speak out. And I think the silent majority is actually waking up, and it sounds to me like they're finally catching on. They're finally speaking out against wickedness in our country, and even if it means giving up your favorite NFL team. Uh, I watched a number of people on, on uh, YouTube and on the social media burn their uniforms, their hats, all their memorabilia for the NFL because they're mad at these players because they're, they're not willing to stand and show respect for our national anthem and our flag. And people are mad. And I'm thankful that they are. I'm thankful that people are taking a stand against these people. And I hope that it has repercussions on in the NFL and all athletic sports that they'll realize that uh, they are wrong and they need to honor what our flag stands for and what our country is all about. Well, God bless you. You have a great week, and I hope that you'll keep on keeping on in recovery. And remember, Jesus Christ is the only power, our higher power, that we need to draw upon every day to help us to stay strong and clean. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Have a great day.